Hey everyone. So first off, I want to start off by saying happy Thanksgiving. And uh, in this video, well, I was actually thinking I'm not making a video today because of, you know, family stuff. But, uh, you know, I have the morning to myself and uh, we don't really start eating the, the dinner and things uh, later on. So I have a lot of time to do a lot of things. So, you know, why not make a video for the sake of consistency? Anyways, in this video, I wanted to talk about um, my thoughts on what was announced for what they're changing in uh, competitive play, PvP competitive play um, back at BlizzCon. And uh, it's been a few weeks now, so I still don't think it's that late because, you know, there's, you, there's always an analysis that can be made. So, yeah, I just wanted to give my thoughts on that. So first, let's go through, I guess, the where we came from <laughs> in Overwatch 2 with uh, with competitive. Um, since to see kind of how significant these changes are going to be, because I do think that the changes they're making will save competitive. Um, in my point of view, I've already seen um, once they've announced all these different changes, and I'll get into them later. Um, even a bunch of my friends said they were definitely going to be coming back, like like day one that these things are are implemented. So that's a really good sign. Um, but yeah, first let's go back into how everything started when Overwatch 2 came out. So the biggest change, the biggest and most jarring change of Overwatch 2 was that you had to play seven games or lose 20 games to be able to see um, what your rank was. They also changed the ranking system. It wasn't an SR system anymore. It was more of a, um, what do you call it? The, how they split up being, you know, gold one or gold two or gold three. Um, actually, I don't even, I don't know if I fully remember. I think that uh, sheesh, I probably should have looked it up. Um, either they still had the SR system, or or they already had moved on to the um, you know gold one, two, or three, or maybe that came that came in later. Yeah, I don't, I don't really remember. That's actually kind of odd. But anyways, it doesn't change uh, what I'm about to say. The problem with this was that you had to play several games or lose several games to be able to see where you ranked. And that was very frustrating for several reasons. But even then, the the SR they would show you back um, back in those back during that time wasn't even your real SR, right? They hid your MMR from you, which was actually what was doing the matchmaking. So let's say your MMR could say that it thinks you're diamond, but it puts you in gold, right? But then you're being matched with other people who are diamond but they could be anywhere from being a masters to like a gold or a platinum also because i don't know because they would also forcefully derank people at the beginning of a at the beginning of a season so you're over there thinking you're gold well you're actually a diamond but on your team you have like a silver and a platinum person and you're just like what the heck is going on and even with the whole mmr thing blizzard's only response was just trust us like we know we know where you are so that was very frustrating there was no transparency the whole thing didn't make any sense and it seemed like it was complicated for no reason and one of the reasons or the big reason why they did it like this was because they didn't want people to play the game and then, you know, see themselves deranking and then kind of just stop playing out of frustration, which I think did the opposite effect, right? Because if you're playing the game and <laughs> and you don't rank, you, you don't get to see what, what's happening. And after your seven games, you you rank, you derank, or you just stay there. Staying there and deranking still sucks. Like like you're saving that incremental you know, negative feeling for just a big, <laughs> a big F you <laughs> because you only have two out of the three that can be the well, two out of the two out of the three are negative. Only one out of three is positive and that's where you rank up. So I think you're, you're losing a lot by, by doing things like that. But over the years, they did modify um, things, try to make things better here and there. And I, I honestly wouldn't say that they succeeded really in any way of making it better. Um, but you know, they're, they're, they're doing what they can. Right. And, uh, until now, right. Until BlizzCon where they announced like things we've been telling them since day one. And, uh, they, they're even going to be modifying the matchmaking, um, because matchmaking for the longest time has been very weird. And, uh, I don't really understand why it's so difficult, but they have expressed that they, they do change it like several times a day to try to make things better and to see like what what works and they said that for some reason they can't go back to the over one 
Overwatch 1 model um, of matchmaking that it makes everything even more worse. And I, again, I don't really know why, but since they're at least talking about it, I understand that maybe there's something about it that I don't understand because I don't see why it's, it's not just, you know, a ratio of your wins and losses, right? And then how much you gain with your SR or lose with your SR is affected by a certain amount by, you know, where your stats compare to the normal model. Uh, of how you're playing your character. So um, for those of you guys who don't know what a normal model, model is, um, Google normal models or normal distributions. It's a very useful um, statistic um, method that applies to just everything in life. It helps makes sense of a lot of things. But anyways, I'm glad that they're talking about it and I'm glad that it's something that um, they're gonna be fixing. But I do uh, have one thought. It's not a fully fleshed out thought yet and I'm just going to spitball it here. The matchmaking, I don't know to what... I don't know if there's been a mitigating effect on matchmaking ever since um, we switched over to 5v5 with only one tank. Mainly because not only is the tank so important, but if you don't know how to play a character that counters the tank that counters whatever you're playing, you're it kind of doesn't matter how good you are at a, at a certain point. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, you can't outplay a, a tank that counters you, right? It's not necessarily rock, paper, scissors. But let's say I'm, I'm starting off a game and I'm Doomfist and the enemy's playing, I don't know, D.Va, right? And then, you know, putting work on the D.Va, then the D.Va switches to Orisa, And now the Orisa starts putting work on me. The only character I can switch to is Zarya, right? But what if <laughs> I'm not that good at Zarya, which I don't think I am. I don't think I'm that good at Zarya. But to be able to play against an Orisa <laughs> while playing Doomfist, I would have to be a much better Doomfist than that person is an Orisa because Orisa just comes innate with a bunch of stuff that just stops Doom, right? There's, there's, a, there's a lot of things that she just shuts down by by existing so just just things like that so because of the whole counter pick thing you know you could be a better tank at the ones you play but if somebody just counters you and you're not able to you know be much better than you have to be to fill that gap right of the advantages that that hero has against yours then you know what do you do now it's not fully thought out uh, i might make a video about this uh, let me know what you think in the comments but i it is something i've been thinking about so let me Give me some time to kind of make more sense of those thoughts. But anyways, let's go into um, let's go into some of these changes they announced uh, a few weeks ago, and I am very excited for these things. So first, let's start with the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, and that is them getting rid of well, not getting rid of, but they're they're essentially kind of getting rid of group restrictions. There's there's going to be two different ways they're going to be doing matchmaking where they have a narrow uh, matchmaking and a wide matchmaking. So narrow will be like if you solo queue or if you're playing with other if you queue into a, a game with other people of a similar rank. The wide queue will be people like very far from you. So let's say you could have like a masters and a gold player playing together. Blizzard hit the freaking nail on the head on this one. And I'm only sad that it took them so long <laughs> to, to do this because let me tell you guys something. Let me tell you why I play Overwatch. I play Overwatch most nights, right? Maybe five nights out of the week after I get back from work and, you know, I finish doing all my house stuff. And like from 9 p.m. to midnight is generally when I'm playing. And I almost am always, always playing with my friends. It's like a group therapy, like for all of us, where we just kind of get on and we kind of talk shit about our day or our girls or our wives and, you know, and even like about each other. It's just, it's kind of like going to the bar and just kind of drinking and like kind of just talking trash, right? That's kind of, you know, what you do with your boys. So, you know how some people are social drinkers. I'm more of a, a social gamer, right? Because you get, you guys already know, like my schedule is already like so packed and just you know, just, I'm always kind of doing something, always, you know, running around, trying to get things done, trying to be productive. So for those of you in the comments talking about, oh, your gameplay sucks. Well, you know what, guys? Like, that's just like your opinion, bro. <laughs> but uh, but no, it's because I'm I'm normally just kind of drinking and talking shit with my friends. And I'm not like most YouTubers who kind of just, you know, post the videos that they where they where they always win right or like their best games one because i don't have that much to choose from and two because it's not that deep right I, my competitor games are fine um i post them here 
uh, a decent amount. Whether I win or lose, I put my competitive games on here. So, so yeah, no, I see those comments. I be reading them, right? <laughs> Despite what they say about not reading comments, I read all of them. Um, so, so yeah. Anyways, the problem is that several of my friends kind of suck. Um, so. <laughs> Some of them are silver and gold and I can't play competitive with them. So that's also like the reason why um, almost all of my um, the videos I have playing in the background when I post a video um, is, uh, is is a quick play game, right? <laughs> I, I just prefer to play quick play games because I prefer to play with my friends more than I care about grinding. Because even if I do want to grind, um, and I, even if I want to grind with my friends that are at my level, they're just, they're not always available, right? And that's the funnest way to play, play Overwatch. And I, I said this before around the time in Overwatch 1. Overwatch 1, playing with your friends, is a completely different game than Overwatch 1 playing with, um, than solo queuing. Completely different experience. It's almost like the difference between a C and an A. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing with uh, my low skill friends in competitive games, even if that means that I'm going to lose, but it would be more fun to D rank. Yeah, it'll be more fun to D rank and get to like a more stable level where they're kind of okay and then kind of watch them get better and all of us climb together, right? Because not only is playing competitive with your friends fun, but I think that's even that's an understatement. I think playing competitive and watching you and your friends go up uh, in ranked in Overwatch is one of the funnest things in any video game I have ever played, like in my life. And I've played a ton of video games, but that experience is one of the best experiences I have ever had in a video game. And I think that's what made Overwatch originally, you know, top of the charts for for everything. The problem is over time, you know, some friends got better than other friends and then you couldn't play with those friends. And then now we have 5v5, right, where I play a tank and some of my other friends used to play tanks. But now, you know, because there's only one tank now, so people had to move around. So. So, yeah, so this alone is a game changer for me. And I think this will greatly bolster the appeal of, um, of Overwatch 2. And I think people will welcome this. Uh, all around not only because you kind of have a choice right whether you want to queue alone or with people around your rank or with people who are way beyond or below your rank so you, you still have the option so yeah let's move on to the the next big change and that is uh, how you get feedback now after every game i would like to interrupt this video to ask you to like and subscribe if you made it this far in the video chances are you kind of like what i'm talking about so you know you know help me out guys so the fact that you couldn't see um, where you were, the fact you couldn't see your rank after every game in Overwatch uh, in Overwatch 2 was a problem since day one of Overwatch 2. So I would like to say thank you. Nobody liked this. It was it was like I said earlier, and I kind of not to reiterate too much. It was to make people feel less bad about losing or deranking, but it entirely just made everything worse. Like across the board, it just overall made. For me personally, it, I didn't want to play competitive anymore, like at all anymore. I remember I went like a whole month without playing competitive once because it was it was so bad. It was, and then it was also the time where it was Roadhog and Arisa meta, and I was a Doomfist player. <laughs> that, was, that was horrible. But I'm glad that Blizzard finally realized a year later that people like seeing incremental progress. They like that little feedback, whether it's good or bad. And the little increments of feedback, whether it's good or bad, is is better than taking everything all at once it's like what i said earlier that you know if you if you play these you know five seven ten games and you stay the same it still sucks <laughs> right so staying the same sucks going down really sucks and going up feels good but then that's it like it's it's, it's just kind of forces you to keep playing to like kind of fill out your you know that that group of play and if you're losing you're going to keep playing and losing because you have like a bad mental state and you're just doing it because you just want to reach that threshold but it's bad for you as opposed to you play three games you lose three games you see that you're about to d rank so you take a pause you know you take a break and then you come back the next day or a few hours later when you're refreshed so it just made this cycle of just negativity where you just kind of felt compelled to you know get that group done so anyways they're also going to be you know showing you the progress to the next point so kind of like sr rare uh, you know was it 2500 to 3000 is like you know gold to to platinum or something like that 
Um, now they have it, you know, called one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm guessing that each 100 is, uh, you know, gold one, two, three, or four, or five. So now they're changing that to, you know, a progress from 0% to 100, which is actually no real difference, right? Like, no matter what range of numbers you have, you could always just kind of normalize it down to 0 to 100. So, you know, that's that's pretty easy. So a very welcome and great, great change um, to this. And it's actually pretty cool that they're doing it from gold, you know, five through one or like they're keeping those increments because I do think it'll give you more of a sense of progress as opposed to, you know, just silver to gold <laughs> because that that is like that's literally five times longer. So, you know, seeing yourself go up one, two, three, as opposed to just one big lump sum is also better. Again, increments, people like increments, guys, like people like people are nerds they like to be given information they like their transparency they like to keep track of their progress so good job blizzard and the last thing that was a big deal for me was how they're going to be doing placement matches um so originally this was even a problem in overwatch one where placement matches didn't mean anything and i don't know why i was in the game right it if you think about it it's it's actually exactly how they had the competitive in overwatch 2 when it came out where the way placement matches worked was you still gain and lose a sr the exact same way you would if it was in the middle of the season but you just can't see it until you finish your placement matches then you're just there there was a literally no point it had no effect on anything of where you were placed at all it was so stupid and I wouldn't be surprised if this is what entirely inspired um, the new way there are five five to seven uh, wins or 20 losses that they that they made up for Overwatch 2. I, I would probably bet that's where it came from. But what they what they said at BlizzCon was that now placing matches are going to have a significant effect on not only where you're placed, but how much you gain or lose, depending on where you're placed. So now it actually means something, right? So it's very very good and i don't know why they didn't think why <laughs> why wasn't this the case before it's so i don't know i don't get it but also a very great and welcome change so yeah i think i'll end it here um i do think that all these things will save competitive um i told some of these things to my friends and they said they will be back day one if all of these get implemented because i had a lot of friends who left because of this and for other reasons, but I'll make videos for those. Uh, I haven't spoken about the new um, battle pass system and uh, the new monetization things that they're trying to do. So even some of the new characters that they revealed, I haven't, I haven't talked about that yet. But uh, I think this this would be great because Overwatch isn't just about the grind, right? It's about playing with your friends, in my opinion, at least, and in my experience. So I'm glad that they're focusing on that again. And it's kind of odd that we're getting all this information right after they're bought by Microsoft. I should probably make a video about that too. But uh, because I don't know if this was already in the works before they were bought, but you know, I don't know, man. It, it took a while to get some really basic things done and now it looks like everything is happening. And I know Microsoft is gonna let them do whatever they want. Right, because one, they already have like a bunch of revenue coming from other places. So, you know, Overwatch is a significant game that pulls in a lot of money. But if you're pulling in, you know, 100 million a year compared to a company that's pulling in like maybe, <laughs> you know, 500 billion a year, you're not, you know, the, the higher ups aren't going to be really messing with you that much. Right. They'll, they'll give you your freedom. So it's kind of interesting that they need an entire, you know, essentially a revolution <laughs> like an entire entire change of government uh, or administration to to be able to do good stuff so kind of lets you see how much you know a bad administration could ruin a good game but uh yeah i'm very happy for this i hope you guys are too let me know what you think in the comments so don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment for the algorithm and also don't forget that i love you